the privilege to welcome Dr. Prabha Adhikari, who is a professor and head of geriatric medicine at Yanapoya Medical College. And uh, he is also, she is also the uh, immediate past president of Geriatric Society of India. Uh, welcome you, madam. Uh, I have the privilege to welcome you. And uh, also I request Dr. Anand P. Ambali, who is the professor of medicine, geriatric clinic, BLDEDU, Sri BM Patil Medical College and RC, Bijayapura in Karnataka. Uh, welcome Dr. Anand P. Uh, Ambali. Thank you, sir. Uh, you both of you have to act as the chairpersons for the next session, and the speaker is Dr. Shambhu Sambras from us there. So over to you, chairpersons, respected chairpersons. Over. Thank yeah. you. It is uh, my pleasure to introduce Dr. Shambhu Sa Shambhu Samrat Samajda, uh, who has whom you have seen the young enthusiastic person that he is. Uh, he's a general physician, diabetologist, and general practitioner in Kolkata, has an experience of seven years in these fields. He uh, practices at Health ETC Clinic in Kolkata. He completed MBBS from R.G. Kar Medical College in 2010 uh, and MD Medicine from Utkal University in 2016. And he's currently doing DM in clinical pharmacology. What a great uh, uh, person he is. Uh, he is at the moment in K Calcutta School of uh, Tropical Medicine. Some of the services provided by the doctor are diabetes management, clinical pharmacology consultation, prescription safety assessment, prescription reconciliation, asthma and allergy management, allergen immunotherapy. So over to you. Uh, 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 I think uh, this entire uh, workshop is because of him. Uh, and uh, we are very eager to hear him uh, and uh, request him to share his knowledge with us. No, Madam, uh, first, thank you, Madam. It is a really honor because you were one of the uh, 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 dreamed speaker, I may, I may say. Whenever you talk in different conferences, uh, I was eagerly uh, uh, hearing you. So it is a really honor for me. But I, I, I had not done my MD in medicine. I have done my MD in pharmacology from Utkal University. And I, I, I had completed my DM in clinical pharmacology and now posted in School of Tropical Medicine. So thank you, madam. Thank you very much. And at the onset, I just want to thank uh, Dr. Koushik Dash, Professor Opi Sharma, sir, and Professor Shantanu Kumar Tripathi, sir, for giving me this opportunity to share my voice uh, with this august audience and galaxy of speakers. So in this diagram, you can see uh, that incident when Horatius set out to defend the Roman bridge against the Etruscans, he knew full well that the city elders had already planned to cut it down, sacrificing him and the bridge in order to save the day. So chronic disease care in the older person in many ways is like a Horatian bridge and often present in the background requiring much attention but getting little care and in the moment of crisis easily sacrificed. So in this uh, cartoon you can see the diagram of, or, or you can say the photograph of Ida Killing, Roger Gentleholm, and Don Pellman, all of them has one similar picture that they are 100 years old. They are active. What is important to note that the protagonist of modern medicine must highlight that there are two techniques to manage disease in the geriatric population. Number one, acknowledge its presence. And number two, we need to uh, prevent it from developing in the, uh, that disease. That means what we are going to discuss for next 15 minutes. 
so the latter leads to uh, leads us on the preventive medicine that we are going to discuss now but what happen if we are talking about preventive medicines specifically in the field of geriatric medicine the geriatricians and other physicians caring for the older person must see whether there is role of preventive medicine in the older person also because there are some uh, argument against that so with that and as we know that the preventive medicine in the field of elder people is often neglected but this covid 19 vaccination program is one of the we can say torch bearer in the field of this geriatric preventive medicine and uh, we all know that the geriatric population was giving more emphasis while choosing vaccine against covid 19 so with that we for we are going to discuss about this topic so what is the loss of health with aging so in this chart we can see the representation of normative aging with loss of full stock of health so what is full stock of health that means when the individuals are born and that indicating the no morbidity so when there is a if we can contrast with that square curve square curve with uh, that uh, con convex curve so we can find the difference so what we want we want fuller stock of health and for that the we need to square that particular curve and that represents the ideal situations for most patients and for that these five important mantras are there to have squared curve against that curved curve so don't smoke be physically active eat a healthy diet maintain a healthy weight and get enough sleep there are some concerning numbers in india we can found populations more than 60 years as we can we we know that the geriatric population or elderly population generally denoted the age if it is more than 60 years but there are some debates also on that issue but it 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 is tripled in last 50 years even we can if we can see the census data of 2001 to 2011 there is almost 1% increase in that population level whose age is more than 60 years the problem is that 88% of them are confined to their home or bed 27% of them up who are more than 80 years are home bound and important thing is that the economy per capita expenditure on health among them is at around 125 rupees this is 2005 data so now you can uh, assume the increment in that but there is i found no data on that in recent days this is 2005 data and at that time what is important the per capita out of pocket expenditure was at around 100 rupees and among that maximum was the outpatient expenditure that is 74 rupees and most of that outpatient expenditure is contributed by purchasing drugs so that is 72 rupees and it was assumed that due to this increasing cost there is a chance that 40% of this population will go below the poverty line and unfortunately this in among this elderly population whose age is more than 60 years they among them 73% are illiterate as per that 2011 census data so what types of prevention we know from our community medicine classes we need primary prevention when disease does not occur we need secondary prevention 
to detect and treat asymptomatic disease before symptoms occurs and then the tertiary prevention that means the consequences of existing disease and recurrent disease that, that does not so should not occur like stroke prevention or uh, something else so now coming to the primary prevention we need to promote health habits we need to increase adherence on these important broad headings we need to maintain nutrition again counsel against smoking or alcohol we need to promote exercise adequate sleep immunization specifically in regards to pneumococcal and uh, influenza vaccination prevention of osteoporosis need to see the predisposing factors which are modifiable like smoking obesity hypertension diabetes hyperlipidemia and hypercholesterolemia non modifiable risk factors we have we don't have any control over that we need to check how to prevent injury examples are prevention of barn accidents falls removal of obstacles keep the floor dry bright lighting flat shoes like low level switches easy and safe access to water like that regarding secondary prevention to early detect the disease and having the prompt intervention we need to have a very good screening program we need to screen for early detection of modifiable risk factors and subsequently we need adequate management specifically diseases chronic diseases like hypertension diabetes mellitus dental problems drug adverse effects cancers infections nutritional deficiency states and i and ent checkups so early detection of and treatment is an important step of this secondary prevention so there are few important points that follows by united states uh, uh, medicine uh, medical program when the age is between 45 to 64 year so here one another question arises whether the preventive approach we should start after 60 or far before that so when we are checking a patient whose age is 40 years or maybe 35 years 36 years from that time we should think how they should take some approaches so that they can prevent the geriatric diseases apart from that if we go by that united states states task force uh, recommendations then we will find they consider prostate cancer screening with annual psa and digital rectal examination at age 50 beginning of colorectal cancer screening at age 50 with uh, fecal uh, occult blood testing or flexible sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy there are variety of pharmaco economic study also done there and that suggests generally to do occult blood testing in community level and flexible sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy in very high risk level otherwise the cost will be much more reassess the vaccination status and accordingly need to plan a vaccination against this infections like influenza streptococcus pneumonia tetanus or viral hepatitis and also need to consider screening for coronary artery disease now the when the age is more than 65 years what should be the approach for this uh, what should be the preventive approach number one again we need to readdress the smoking status and encourage cessation at every visit smoking cessation program there should be there this is not that much common in our country but it was very much recommended there to do one time ultrasound at at least for abdominal aortic aneurysm in men whose age is 65 to 75 years who have ever smoked need to check pft for all long term smokers to assess the development of copd vaccination against influenza and pneumonia 
screen all postmenopausal women for osteoporosis reassess the vaccination status so reassessment is very important screen for dementia depression visual and hearing problems so there are some specific screening test that can increase in life expectancy for a whole population so there are some examples of that like mammography pap smears screening for the screening like tmt for asymptomatic patients again there are newer evidences generating which giving this type of test screening test little bit in backdated but this type of study or at least we should also have to get more convincing data in our populations so getting a 35 year old smoker to quit smoking that can increase the life expectancy for a population by 3 to 5 years so that is why already we we had discussed whether the preventive approach of this geriatric diseases should we should we start little bit earlier than what we are uh, discussing uh, today so beginning regular exercise for a 40 year man that means 30 minute for three times a week that increase the life expectancy of a whole population by 9 months to 2 years now coming to the tertiary prevention that means it deals with the rehabilitation and caregiver support and this is a multidisciplinary approach which includes physician physiotherapist occupational therapist psychiatrist dietitian nurse and social worker now coming to the adherence which is very important and this is one of the very serious threat because there are lots of drugs we are using for prevention like statin so we can see if we have a study in our country also we'll get lots of data on this non adherence apart from that that is opposite to the adherence if we are taking some drug which is not actually prescribed by us very often we see our patient are taking pantoprazole domperidone combination drugs pantoprazole itopride combination drug or lesuride combination drugs for long time and we all know the consequence of this type of therapy specifically when the, the patients are elderly so importance of medical medicine adherence is there as the elderly are prone to multiple comorbidities and they suffer from polypharmacy there is a increased chance of non adherence and non adherence leads to decreased therapeutic benefit frequent hospital and physician visit increased healthcare expenditure and sometimes cause over treatment and there is a direct link with that cost and non adherence so cost related medication non adherence that due to the cost skip dose reduced dose or delay or not fill a prescription i am not taking statin because in my prescription i am taking some costly anti diabetes drug so this is something we need to consider and we need to take action when there is some cost related medication non adherence and we can search for low cost prescription low cost or alternative generic medicines so interventions such as medication therapy management considering the cost related uh, medication non adherence issues in older adults is very important lastly which is very core to my own topic own discipline i that is clinical pharmacology i am student of clinical pharmacology so preventing atherogenic injury in elderly it was beautifully elaborated by by professor op sharma sir so i am just giving one example of my yeah sorry so a uh, real life case that is 88 year old lady hypertension copd and hypothyroid so she presented to orthopedic surgeon with a low back pain and the 
you can see the prescribed FDCs, which were gabapentin 400 milligram per plus not triptyline 10 milligram. So she had also taking pre 75 milligram plus not triptyline 10 milligram, but it was not disclosed to that orthopedic surgeon. He, she was continuing that also together along with acyclofenac paracetamol, deflazacort 6 milligram along with pantoprazole. Now what happened? All after taking five days of this type of medicines, she had some complaints of GRD like thing along with dryness of mouth. So went a visit to one gastroenterologist and that gastroenterologist prescribed a FDC of pantoprazole plus itoprite Patient was taking ondansetron 8 milligram due to the vomiting uh, from uh, over-the-counter drugs and also taking domperidone on top of that. Along with, she had some cough, so took azithromycin 500 milligram once daily. Again, that is uh, over-the-counter. Now, what happened? The patient visited to hospitals, uh, medical college hospitals, medicine department with three episodes of palpitation with blackout. Now, as there is so many medicine, that particular patient was referred to clinical pharmacology OPD of School of Tropical Medicine, where we were there. And we took a detailed medication history and we had done one ECG and that ECG suggests a QTC prolongation. So prolonged QT was there. So now we can assume that why this patient was suffering from this type of palpitation and blackout. So from our OPD, the prescription was reconciled. We omitted all those anticholinergic drugs. And after one month, the patient came back to us with no uh, symptoms. So this is what Professor O.P. Sharma was beautifully mentioned, the importance of prescribing cascade. And we need to prevent that. Prevent that. And when there is polypharmacy, there is always increasing chance of prescribing cascades. And this is the cartoon we can see, the prescribing cascade. If I am taking one drug that causing some symptoms and for to control that symptoms, I am taking another drug. And for that, again, some symptoms is happening. We are not understanding that the drug is the etiology and this cycle, this vicious, vicious cycle is going on and on. So this we need to prevent. So there are some specific issues while prescribing drugs in elderly. And these are the important points. First of all, the elderly are clinical trial orphan. And maximum drugs that we used in elderly are off-level drug. And Already we had discussed about that physiology changes that happen to the patients while they are elderly, the altered pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic properties, multiple comorbidities, multiple medicine systems, Ayurvedic systems, so on, and adherence issues, medication issues. So we need to consider this all while seeing our geriatric patients. And this was an important skill that can prevent drug-induced injury. Just if we can see our own case that we discussed, that 88-year-old uh, lady, the, the patient was taking not triptyline 20 milligram. So you can see the anticholinergic burden. It is not only like that. I am taking some specific anticholinergic drug and I, I will have anticholinergic side effects. Not like that. Even some drugs which is not actually belonging to anticholinergic group, they have some inherent property of anticholinergism. And this is one chart when we can see the drugs like doxephine or we can say flavoxate, commonly prescribed in elderly population also when they are suffering from UTI. The ACV score is high, three. And if a patient is taking two or more this type of high score drug, they have high chance to develop anticholinergic side effects. So we need to understand this very well. Apart from that, we also can predict whether this patient is going to develop adverse drug reactions 
by different types of score. And this is a very easy score, Geronto net eight year score. Like if a patient has comorbid, comorbid conditions four or more, the score is one. Congestive heart failure, then one. Liver disease with transaminase level more than two times of upper limit of normal, then it is one. If there is no other no, number of drugs less than five, then it is zero. If it is between five to seven, it is one. And number of drugs is eight or more, then the score becomes four. Previous history of adverse drug reaction, score is two. There is some compromised kidney function, EGFR less than 60, then it is one. But again, there are some drawbacks to this particular score also. From this great podium, I request the pillars of Geriatric Society of India and the, the geriatric uh, physicians to have to plan for a development of a score that should be India specific. I request all of the respected doctors today present to uh, guide us to develop one ADR predictive, predictive score, which can help our Indian patients. With that, I want to thank you all. And this was a quote by Thomas Edition that the doctor of the future will give no medication, but will interest his patients in the care of human frame, diet in the cause and prevention of disease. I still remember one presentation, extraordinary pre presentation by Prabha ma'am on exercise, importance of exercise. And exercise yoga has no other alternative. And we need to uh, percolate this message to ev everyone. With that, I thank you all. And this is one uh, picture taken in our clinical pharmacology OPD at School of Tropical Medicine. It was pre-COVID era. It was around 2018 and time. So with that, I thank you and over to our respected chairperson, madams. Excellent uh, deliberation and my ex appreciation. Really, it was a scholarly lecture, I would say. And I'm very, very happy I got to chair this session. Uh, and uh, I, I have great respect for pharmacologists, especially clinical pharmacologists, because we we in KMC had created a clinical pharmacology unit where pharmacologists came to the ward with us and educated us. So that was a fantastic exercise that we were having. And you have shown it by your uh, presentation. And I'm sure I'm going to consult you for many of our uh, polypharmacy cases, especially our near and dear ones. Uh, thank so you, over to thank Dr. You. Anand Dambali for comments and questions. Yes, yeah. that was a, a very uh, lucid presentation. And the message was very clear that if do no good, at least do not harm uh, that what we follow in as a clinician. So let the, uh, the session is open for questions from the audience. I saw uh, Dr. Dheeraj Kapoor, I think, raising his hand sometime during presentation. Uh, we don't have questions in the chat box, but if anybody wish to ask the question, they can put it in the chat box. Or we can. And I think uh, GSI should take the suggestion from him in uh, developing an Indian uh, uh, ADR risk score. Uh, and uh, yes. he, he should lead us being no. the DM. No, madam, you, you will guide us yes. with this a development of this score. And this is yeah, I think we will develop. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, with people like you, I'm sure we'll be able to develop. Yeah. Well, uh, our past president has also said it is to be done means it is to be done. And uh, what I assure you, uh, Madam past president, that uh, uh, GSI will join hands with them, will make a small team and try to do it. Yes. As far as the financing part is concerned, GSI will take care, but uh, we will involve them as our resource person. Thank you for your suggestion. Can I make a comment here? Yeah, please. I am Professor Shantanu Tripathi. I superannuated from School of Tropical Medicine as head of clinical pharmacology. And I have the privilege to start this clinical pharmacology OPD outpatient clinic 
at School of Tropical Medicine, which is the first of its kind in the country. We are now trying to start the clinical pharmacology OPD as well as the consultation services in one of the premier uh, uh, private hospital in Kolkata. And I'm happy that uh, we have Dr. Sambo with us, who is a uh, very good, I should say, learner in this area. And uh, he is a he has, he is an asset in the area of clinical pharmacology. I just make a couple of comments. The first part of his presentation was, or rather the title of his presentation was preventive medicine. I would say when you talk of drug induced disorders in the aged, prevention is certainly better than cure. And uh, second about the preventive medicine in the elderly, the elderly healthcare considerations should commence perhaps much earlier than the commencement of the elderly age. If we want our elderly people to live healthy, then perhaps we have to start thinking from say the age of 45 or 50. So geriatric medicine, practice of geriatric medicine, not only to welcome people after they have attained an elderly age, rather they should encourage, and I, I hope the society will try to promote this concept that if you wish to have a healthier aged life, come to us when you are approaching uh, middle, in the middle of your 40s, then only you can expect. So I would say the principle of catch them young, uh, if you wish to offer no the elderly individuals a healthy life. And the third, I would say regarding that drug induced disorders, uh, the best prescription is one that perhaps does not contain any medicine. With these few words, thanking Dr. Shambho Samrat Samajdar profusely, I wish there is a huge future of clinical pharmacology in geriatric practice. And I wish the society will foster this and work together. With us. Thank you very much. Over. Thank you, sir. So we uh, all of you Excuse me, excuse me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to disclose one. I want to disclose one thing here. Uh, our professor Shantanu Tripathi sir, uh, Shambhu Shambra Shamadar, and other four persons all are member of Geriatric Society of India. They are our members. This yes, is my. Yes, sir. yes. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we are moving to our next. Uh, there are a few questions in chat box. I think if you can attend. Just check one ADR and can the beers criteria be used for reporting ADR? So please clarify, sir. Sir, with your, with your permission, can I write down that answers because our next speakers are yeah. already present and we are- yes, sir. By, yes. Please, uh, please, sir. please write down. So we can move forward with the next yes. session and we will answer those questions in the chat box. Fine, sir. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. And thank you, sir. So now we are moving to our next topic. And to introduce a speaker and topic, may I request uh, two eminent personalities from Geriatric Society of India, Professor Sundeep uh, Tamanne, who is the consultant physician and geriatrician in the Dinonath Bangeshkar Hospital and RC Pune, Maharashtra, and our own Professor Jyotirmoy Palsar, who is the professor of medicine Archikor Medical College and Dean of Indian College of Physicians. Uh, and he is a pioneer in the field of medicine, research, and education. Over to uh, our respected chairperson, sirs, to introduce our honor, honorable speaker and the topic. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shambo, for inviting me in such a uh, uh, occasion. Uh, speak uh, topic is elderly bone health and adherence to care services and speaker is needs no 